<laughs> YouTubers. Today, I'm gonna show you a piece of walnut that I've had laying around for about 26 years. Well, okay, maybe not that long. Um, this here, and I'm sorry about all the movement while I'm talking and walking here. This is a piece of walnut that was um, from a tree that a guy had laying around in his yard for uh, six years, he told me. And there's the other half right there. And there's my electric chainsaw because I don't feel like fussing with the fuel. And this is some sculpture that I'm working on. Now, oh, that's another piece of walnut. Now back to this, back to these these guys right here. This nice big old hunk of walnut, which measures roughly 18 inches by about 14, is going to become an amazing bowl. If I have my way about it, and I think I do today, I'm going to carve it out, and maybe this one too if I feel frisky. And you can see it's pretty ratty wood, actually. It's got some massive checks in it because that idiot left it out in his yard. Attacked by bugs and the sun and the rain. And there's even, you know, there's, there's even bugs... Uh, that have gotten in this, so I'm probably going to have to grind all that stuff off the outside right there. But then again, maybe I'll leave it. That uh, the the bug holes make an interesting uh, abstract addition. But if somebody buys it from me for 300 bucks and then bugs start crawling out of it, I'll probably be in trouble. So maybe I will grind them off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind these babies and I'm going to carve them out using my power carver which is similar to a, an Excalibur uh, carving head, but I got the cheap Chinese knockoff off e eBay. I've had both. They both work almost equally well. And so let's see how far I get, Before I folks. get started carving this thing, I want to show you something kind of interesting on the edge of this. And uh, <clears throat> I have since discovered that when you see these kind of uh, nodules or these bumps growing on the outside of wood, that typically indicates some real, real beautiful um, graining or growth <clears throat> on the inside, which isn't just your plain old growth rings, but something spectacular. I, I've found that many times on wood. So uh, once I start tar uh, cutting into this, we'll, we'll see if I'm right. So design becomes a question when you're looking at a nice big hunk of raw wood like this. Hand to give you an idea how big this is. Um, now. I got this branch hanging off the side here. That's kind of a cool, natural design element. Um, then again, it's kind of in the way, but some people dig that kind of rustic thing. So I may leave that. I might not, depending on how it looks once I start carving this thing. And I, what I just looked at over there on the other side was, uh, those are actually some of the bug holes. So that's what makes me nervous because I have seen uh, beetles crawling out of this wood. So I might have to just carve all that outside off. Although it does leave, <clears throat> again, a neat rustic element when you leave this kind of crap, you know, on the outside and then you carve the out or you carve the inside out and make it really smooth. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of play it as I go along. You know, that's the thing about being the so-called artist designer. You decide what it's going to look like and hopefully your instincts are right. You don't jack it up. Well, let's see how it turns out, <laughs> What I just said was, I believe in safety. That's why I got flip-flops on. Wait, now this is the real safety item here is your strong leather gloves when you're using an uh, angle grinder with a carving attachment. That sucker is mean, and I'm telling you what, if you slip just once, you can lose a finger or your whole hand, or it might just cut your torso from your lower trunk. Um, I got Air Pro, I got Breathing Pro, and I even got a little chip guard to keep that stuff out of my face. Uh, you got to take care of yourself because, uh, I mean, these things are, they don't mean maybe. I mean, okay, I've been grinding business. on this thing for what felt like about five minutes, but it was probably only one minute because I'm not a very patient person. You can see the fine dust I'm I'm digging up now. One of the one of the reasons I'm not <laughs> getting a whole lot of traction here is because I've dropped this once or twice, and and some of my teeth have been kind of knocked off of here. So it it grinds okay, but it's not digging as fast as I want. I'm going to show you what it does, and that what I'm going to do then is I'm going to change that head, and I'm going to go to a more aggressive carving head. So uh, hold on for a second.
You can see I was making some progress. That might be a bug hole right there. Uh, you know, I, I held it in one place a couple times just so you could see the divot that it starts to dig. But overall, I'm not making much progress on a big old hunk like this. So, I'm all right, gonna so as you can head. see, I stepped up to my King Arthur chainsaw tool. Now, this sucker is way more aggressive. I mean, it cuts like a chainsaw. Now, I could have just used my chainsaw, but the thing is, um, this attachment on the angle grinder gives you a lot more control. So there's a 50% probability I put this on backwards. Let's see if it cuts. Yep, I got her. That was cut. what I was screaming was, yep, I got her. She's cutting. Now you can see by just those quick little cuts that that's way more aggressive. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make some deep divots in this very quickly. And once I uh, get it roughed out with this, I'll probably go back to my other tool so then I can kind of refine the cuts. All right, so I'm a out. couple minutes into this now. Um, I'm just doing some basic plunge cuts and just, I kind of delineated what I think is gonna be more or less the inside of the bowl. Um, so you can see even that little bit that I did took quite a bit of energy. I mean, that thing kicks a lot that, uh, that uh, chainsaw cutter and uh, so I'm just gonna keep going at it till I, I get a bowl cut out of that and then I'll start to uh, refine that with other uh, carving heads. See I'm just gouging this out. Now can you look at this? I'm gouging out. Come over, walk over this way. So I'm just gouging it out and I'm hitting it with my uh, chainsaw cutter. Okay now I'm gonna cut so you might want to go over there. Okay, you can see it's later in the day now because I'm being beaten about the head and shoulders by the bright sunlight. Now, you know, I have to give you this caveat. I'm not a pro at doing these uh, uh, bowl carving. In fact, this is like the second or third one that I've done. I mean, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how to do it. Now, I want to caution you on using these carving tools. Uh, if you watch the Excalibur video, you'll see the guy effortlessly plunge cutting into you know down into a log or whatever i'll tell you what that thing bucks and kicks like a bronco um the the harder you push on it and the deeper you go the more it has a tendency to jerk and let me tell you something that is exceedingly dangerous that's why i use these heavy, heavy leather gloves you got to make sure you got a firm grip with both hands when you're using that because otherwise if your hand slips down there it cut your hand right off or a couple of fingers and you don't want that so maintain really positive control you can see I made quite a bit of shavings in just a short amount of time I think I do like the real natural blackish outline um, the way the way that I cut this the way that I carved this um, you saw some of it basically I took the tool and I did kind of raking cuts like this you know and going kind of deep right and then I would do some diagonal cutting like this. And that would leave little pieces. So I kept kind of going like that, going like that. Now when I get into the, the corner areas like this, you know, you can see the head is uh, round. So what I kind of did was lightly, I, I kind of took it and I kind of ran it up like that. You can see the little saw marks there. And I kind of ran it up and all around like that. That's how I kind of refined it. I haven't really refined this too much, but I don't think I need to because my next cutting, uh, my, my next carving that I'm going to do on this is I'm going to use a epoxy impregnated um, sanding disc and I'll show you that. It's a very stiff disc that has is pretty coarse and it'll carve itself, just not nearly as aggressively as this so I'm uh, back chainsaw with this, blade. Uh, plaster or plaster, epoxy impregnated sanding disc now. This thing is very stiff. Uh, uh, see, I can't even hardly bend it with my, just my fingers. You can see that sucker is very coarse. That's either a 24 or 
maybe a 16, I can't remember, I didn't even look at it, I just felt, I said, whoa, that sucker's coarse. So that's gonna, um, that's gonna sand all these rough marks down real quick. Let's see how uh, aggressive that buzzer is. It was kind of weird that using that uh, epoxy impregnated sandpaper, uh, it was burning the wood more than uh, it was really grinding it. And I think that's because it was kind of worn along the edges. So I, uh, a lot of the grit was off the edges. So I was mostly just hitting it with the paper. But you can see it's all black and it smells burnt. Can you smell that? I can. Well, anyway, so I went back to this uh, carving head, which is not nearly as aggressive as the uh, chainsaw. But you can see how nice and smooth it's coming out now. And I'm, I'm getting rid of all those uh, chainsaw head marks with, with this carving head. And I'll show you how I'm doing that. Just real light touch, just basically up and down, up and down, all on the edges. Okay, so essentially I refined the shape of that with the uh, with the uh, with a grinding head or carving head that I used there, and now I got my amazing Makita sander out, which I love because it has different speeds, and I got 60 grit sandpaper that I'm using to try to refine the shape. Now, unfortunately, I kind of gouged it here. It's got some gouges, and you'll note that this is the end grain. You see the circular, whatever. This is the way the tree grew up and down, up and down. Well, that doesn't sand real well. It actually more burnishes than sands. So I'm going to have to hit that with a few different pieces of sandpaper to get that smooth. But it's it's coming along. I'm getting a lot of the roughness out of there. So it's, uh, okay, yeah. So uh, I'm sanding. Uh, I'm trying to get rid of all the tool marks. Come on over here. You see I still got some scratches. You can see some of the beautiful green is starting to come out. But I got a lot of these tool marks that I've been sanding and sanding and sanding with 60 grit, trying to get them out. So I'm just going to do the best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's supposed to look rustic. And if you look at the outside, I decided I'd go with a partial rustic. I sanded a little bit, but I left a lot of the buggy marks and stuff like that. So that's where I'm at. I'm just sanded it. I'm on 60 grit. I'm probably going to go to like 120, then 220, and then I'm going to finish it. So They say in Idaho, poke me in the butt with a fork because I'm done. This thing is done. I sanded it all around the outside. You can see the beginnings of some beautiful grain on the inside. Got some horrific cracks. Oh, well, somebody might like it. And, uh, you know, I make these things to sell them. I have an Etsy store. Uh, I'm going to hit it with some finish later when it's not so hot. I sanded it with 60 and then a little bit of 120. And I went right to 200 and 220, and I sanded it all over. I gave it the hand test, I meaning I rubbed it all over, make sure there wasn't anything that felt rough. And uh, she's ready for some finish. So, so I decided we'll I'm going to finish bit. this thing with a, a clear wood semi-gloss finish. I got some spray-on stuff. You know, I've had really good results with it. Let's just see how the grain pops. Oh yeah, baby, it's gonna be beautiful. So I'll show you what it looks like when I'm totally done. Okay, boys and girls, here it is. 
I hit it with a couple uh, coats of uh, lacquer, spray on lacquer. I just like it. It's easy to use. I used to use a lot of wipe on polyurethane, but I get really nice consistent results with the spray on lacquer. You can see the coloring is very cool. Still got a lot of the buggy uh, damage and those weird little pokey things, whatever they are. Uh, what it does, and it's like my wife said, it gives the appearance of one of those Japanese wabi-sabi kind of carved um, containers. It could have been deeper. It's actually very big and very heavy. Um, and I think it just came out lovely. So I'll post a couple pictures or photos at the end of this video. So hang on for it. Thanks for watching. There she is.